Hey, thanks for tuning into the Land at Home show. Uh, today we're talking all about fly fishing. Hey, I'm Stephen Davey Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor. Uh, today I am with uh, a friend who also happens to be a realtor and a, a finance finance guru. Uh, his, his name is Philippe Trio, and uh, he's given me a lot of hunting first this year. Philippe uh, took me on my first and only bird hunts I've ever been on. Uh, we're headed to a cool creek in the Louisville area, uh, about 18 minutes away from Louisville, I want to say, um, for some fly fishing. I've never done that. And I also want to make an effort on my YouTube channel to share a little bit more uh, in, a, in a more of a long form way. I do lots of information dense things as you all know, but I don't really talk a lot about things I do for fun. Every once in a while you'll get like a cool video from me from a backpacking trip, but that's about it. So I thought while we were driving, uh, me and Philippe could talk some some fly fishing and uh, and maybe a little bit of hunting too because he has a, a, an extensive hunting background as well. This is my first fly fishing trip so I've got questions and all sorts of things and hopefully a little bit after all of our talking you'll see some footage of I hope <laughs> a successful fly fish but if nothing else it's going to be a gorgeous day today and uh, and it'll be just fun to be out. So Philippe Thank you for enduring the torture that is being on camera. Fleet yes, is not no, being no on problem. camera. <laughs> Very camera shy. Um, well, start with uh, like where are you from? So originally New York, but grew up in Southwest Florida, fishing, doing a ton of saltwater fishing, um, tarpon, snook, redfish. Um, relocated up here, going on three and a half years ago, and loving it. I mean, the hunting up here is incredible. Uh, starting to explore some fishing. Most of my fly fishing has been done in Western North Carolina. Okay. Um, but there's it's just like apparently a gold mine. <laughs> yes. It's, it's <laughs> like incredible that's a, fishery. That's so uh, cool. Off the beaten path and super good access spots in North Carolina. Um, but learning that there's a lot of great spots here in Kentucky. So happy to have a buddy to explore it with, and happy to start exploring. And we're we're doing trout today. Yeah, that's trout. the idea. That's the idea. Yes, there. So that's we're going to be fishing potential. a part of the stream that is trout waters, where they stock it. Um, but there's also smallmouth bass. There's there's a lot of variety in this particular area. So, um, but yeah, hopefully get on some nice rainbow. Right trout. now we're in catch and release, correct? Yes. I have not been fishing since I was like 11. I'm from Michigan. You know, we eat fish every day of the week um, there because we have the Great Lakes and we have you know our own river systems and stuff and um, you know fishing is abundant there but I've not really fished since I was about 11 or 12 and uh, I certainly have never caught a fish and thrown it back that, yeah, that, that'll be a new experience for me it's a very uh, good trade of fly fishermen I think it's you know I, I, I harvest fish love to eat fish but um, fly fishermen are very big into conservation generally speaking yep. and um, catch and release I think is a big part of the ethos for most fly fishermen when did you start fly fishing? I started fly fishing in high school. So one of my uncles is like a hardcore saltwater guy. He travels all over the world going tarpon fishing, permit, bone fishing. Wow. And I actually got interested in fly tying before fly fishing. Um, we were at their house in New York and he showed me how to tie a fly. And I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen, especially being a bird hunter. Um, the ability to use a lot of the materials you get from a bird or deer or elk yeah. in your fly tying is, is a great way that to fur, use That fur, those feathers, yeah. that's pretty, that was impressive. A couple of days ago, Philippe and I met at his house and he kind of gave me a introduction to just the parts, like the rods, the tippets, and other words that I can't remember right now. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of words. Nippers. Uh, what was the other? Oh, the the leader. leader. 
Yeah, we, we went over it. everything. We went over everything. Easy, I, I took a lot of notes because I have a terrible memory. It takes a while for me to like get stuff up here. Um, but it was fascinating to see you have that vice and then all of these different, you know, the elk hairs and the deer hairs and it's just random parts of other animals you harvested. You talked about that coming full circle for fly fishing because, yeah. you know, in the fall you're doing all this big game hunting and maybe some fishing too, but then, you know, as the spring starts coming into those warm months, you take all that fall stuff and yeah. put it in the water, exactly. which is so, so very cool. Um, you, you keep causing me to spend money, which, you know, is yeah. not a good start to our friendship. That's what friends are for. Uh, <laughs> no. But in the long run, I think, like, being able to use the hairs and the feathers and all yeah. that stuff off of the animals, if you do get in a fly tying, you can save some money. Because um, fly tying material is pretty I'm, expensive. I'm going to just you let you do that. Yeah. You can be the fly tying it's, expert. Um, I'll just buy my flies at the... Yeah. <laughs> I, you're right. I'm probably going to be like, ah, oh, this is awesome, and then, you know... Yeah. Next year, I'll have a vice and all that stuff. Um, so, when it comes to, so one thing I want to back up is we had, uh, Philippe has not been fishing much as far as like fly fishing much in Kentucky. No. No, and, and neither have I because I'm brand new today. Um, and so, we had a conservation coffee, what, a few days ago, five days ago, with the Kentucky chapter of the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, which we're both a part of. I've been a part of for, I don't know, maybe like a year. And so um, there was a guide that came and spoke. His name is Bill. He's a very cool person, um, kind of a legend. And uh, they were just talking about trout here in Kentucky. And so no trout is native here except for arguably the brook trout. Is that what he was talking about? Yes. Um, so there's all these different kinds of trout, rainbow trout. Like that's, you know, I grew up seeing rainbow trout, going to like rainbow trout farms in Michigan and stuff. But most of our fish are stocked as far as trout are concerned. But like crappie are native. Uh, we've yeah. got some, we have a bass population. Yeah, know, bass, like, great bass a really population. Really good bass population. Uh, um, what else? I believe there's. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a saltwater guy in terms oh, of like, true. you yeah. know, but I think I want to say there's muskie. Musky oh. or walleye. I, don't quote me on that, but the there, there are so some good. more aggressive, um, like, predator style fish, I know. Um, but smallmouth, I think there's a great smallmouth fish. Like, the Elkhorn has a really yes. phenomenal uh, smallmouth population. I've fished there. Um, and some of the lakes have some really good fishing, too. Like, I've been to Cave Run and fished out there. Um, Lake Harrington. Um, there's some trout actually on the Dix River that kind of oh, leads yeah. out of Lake Harrington, which is kind of tough to access though. But yeah, the Dix has kind of like that. It's like one spot really yeah. that you can. It's all private land around it. You really have to, to boat up through it, but it's yeah. got to be like a, a pretty portable boat because you got to kind of have to go through some rapids, and pretty, you know, interesting areas. That sounds scary. Um, so. All right, we're we're going to this spot, um, and you've been fishing, fly fishing, at least since high school. Certainly, saltwater fishing before that. What is it that you love about this particular sport? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, well, you told me earlier you I just mean, you're just, just nervous because the the camera's on. Well, you know, I think I mean I think a big part of it's adrenaline, right? You get that adrenaline rush out of out of being outdoors and when you get a, a bite it's fun it's just like such a i think it's just such a natural thing for me to love it i don't, I don't know how to explain it honestly um <laughs> it's just fun and it's relaxing and it helps you disconnect and just enjoy the beauty around you and i think that's a really integral part of it for me um, and it's just exploring new wild places like yeah we're going to be in somewhat of a urban environment today but a lot of the times when i'm fishing in western north carolina they're pretty remote streams you're the only one out there and it's just it's just pretty yeah pretty country where you are usually so um that's really fun but and of course getting to keep some of the fish that you catch is is always a, a fun reward at the end of it but um, it's just a lot of fun catching fish is a good adrenaline rush so i'm looking forward to that part well that's all we've got for you for now next time you see us we'll be on the water yeah so catch fish yes and releasing yes <laughs>
So, sayonara for now. This is our drive into Beckley Creek Park. This park is one of four urban parks located right in Louisville. And combined, they total around 4,000 acres. The parks offer outdoor meeting spaces, playgrounds, extensive walking and biking trails, and of course, access to fishing on Floyd's Fork. Though the wildlife here is abundant, no hunting is permitted in any of the parks. All right, so we've already caught some fish today, but you know, had to use our hands a lot to get flies done and traverse everything and figure out just what's going on. But we've been here for, I don't know, almost three hours. We've not been fishing for three. We've probably been fishing for two, two and a half. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's a pretty creek. Anyway, I'm getting a little hungry, but I'm gonna strap on this GoPro head attachment and hopefully there's something exciting that happens while I've got it on. Okay, so of course nothing super exciting happened while I had my GoPro on my head. Uh, we had already caught all the fish that we would end up catching this day. But uh, one of the main things that Philippe was helping me understand for this very first trip was just the, the technique of nymphing or high sticking. And for anybody that doesn't fly fish, it just means that you are allowing your rod to float, sorry, your, um, your line to float with the current. And at the end of your line is a fly that mimics the movement of a nymph. And nymphs are little tiny pre-flies before they turn into insects, but they, they tend to move along the bottom of creeks. They don't float. So uh, we didn't get super deep into casting or anything like that. I was just practicing this high sticking method uh, and it resulted in me getting three fish, which you will see just after this clip. So here's me with my second fish. My first fish was actually a chub, which I did not know fish could have that kind of name, but that's what I caught. Uh, did not get a picture of that. So my second fish was this trout, and uh, you can clearly tell that I have not held a fish since I was 11 or 12, because I'm holding it so awkwardly. Uh, this second picture is my second rainbow trout that I got, and uh, Philippe helped me figure out how to hold a fish a little bit better, get a better picture, that kind of thing. Um, both of them were pretty cool size, and it just was neat to go through the process, of course. And then this last picture is of Philippe. I'm not sure if it's with his first or second fish, but uh, he caught some too, and we just we had a really good time. So that wraps things up for me. Uh, thanks for watching. Please tune in for future episodes of the Land and Home Show. And follow me on Instagram if you have a chance. Landandhomes.ca. Adios.